Hello! My name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matuklasan. This video is the first part of our data description series. And let's begin with the measures of central tendency or location. In today's modern world, one of the most important things that you need to have is internet. Kids and teenagers use the internet to do research for school, to chat with friends, to play online games, or to watch entertaining videos. Adults, on the other hand, use internet to shop and pay bills, work remotely, or even meeting new friends and love interests. However, having internet is not enough. It should be fast and at the same time, reliable. And according to Okula and WorldPopulationReview.com, here are the 10 countries with fast internet speed. Singapore is the nation with the fastest broadband download speeds. Internet speeds in this country are 191.93 megabits per second. In the Philippines, which is on the 90th rank, have an average of 23.6 megabits per second. Ang layo, di ba? Well, you might say this is not your internet speed at home. That's because these data were described using measures of central tendency. Measures of central tendency are sometimes called measures of central location. This measure is a single value that attempts to describe a set of data by identifying the central position within the set of data. They are also classed as summary statistics. For example, what if someone will ask you about your monthly electricity consumption? And the data shown are your electricity usage for 12 months in kilowatt per hour. Instead of stating all these values, you can use a measure of central tendency and just say your monthly consumption is around 196.25 kilowatt per hour. Most sets of data show a distinct tendency to group around a central value. When people talk about an average value or the middle value or the most frequent value, they are talking informally about the three most common measures of central tendency, the mean, median, and the mode. Perhaps the most common measure of tendency is the mean or average value. The mean is defined to be the sum of the data values divided by the total number of values. A sample mean is represented by x bar. So if you want to compute for the sample mean, all you need to do is to add all the values divided by the number of values that you have, represented by summation of x divided by n. If you're getting the mean of the population, all you need to do is to change x bar to Greek letter mu and change small n to capital N to represent the size of the population. For example, the number of deliveries per day of 5 fast food stores in Calamba City are shown below. Find the mean of this data set. What we need to do is to add first these values, then dividing it by 5 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 samples. And by computing, we have 90.6. But since we are talking about the number of deliveries, let us round it off to 91. So the sample mean is 91 deliveries per day. Now, what if we need to find the mean for an ungrouped frequency distribution like this example? The scores for 31 students on a 5-point quiz are given in the table. Find the mean score of this frequency distribution. The formula that we will be needing is x bar equals summation of f times x over n. Remember that f here is just the frequency for the corresponding value of x and n is just the total frequency for the data or of the data. In our example, it will be easier for us to build a f times x column. So I got 2 here by multiplying 1 and 2. So that's the meaning of f times x. I got 8 by multiplying 2 times 4. 3 times 12 is 36, 4 times 8 is 32, and 5 times 5 is 25. Getting the summation of this, f of x, will give us 103. So using the formula, x bar now is just equal to 103, which is the total of the f times x column, and 31, which is the total frequency, which is 31. So the sample mean for this distribution is 3.32. 
And we can now say that the average score of 31 students is a 3.32. There are some properties of the mean that we need to remember. The mean for the data set is unique and not necessarily one of the data values. The data on the right shows the top 10 highest paid jobs in the Philippines if you're going to apply for a junior executive position. The highest paying are IT-related jobs. But if you're already a junior executive in an IT firm, your salary may be higher or lower than this amount. In the previous example, 90.6 is within this data set, but it's not exactly one of them, right? Mean is also affected by extremely high or low values called outliers and may not be the appropriate average to use in this situation. Let's take a look at this example. The average scores of students in a 20-item quiz are shown below. Notice that the first data set contains values that are within the range of 14 to 20, and the average is 17.1, while the second data set contains 2, which is extremely lower than the other data. So 2 here is called the outlier. So adding this outlier drastically changed the value of the mean to 15.73. But we cannot just remove the score of 2 in the data set because some students get low scores like this. That is why outliers are problematic for many statistical analysis because they can cause tests to either miss significant findings or distort real results. There are some guidelines and techniques that we could use to identify outliers like scatterplot diagrams and quartiles. However, there are no strict statistical rules for identifying outliers because it depends on the subject area knowledge and the understanding of the data collection process. The mean also varies less than the median or mode when samples are taken from the same population and all three measures are computed from these samples. The mean is also used for computing other statistics such as the variance. The next measure is the median. The median is the middle value in an ordered array of data that has been ranked from smallest to largest. To compute the median, we follow these two rules. Rule number one, if the data set contains an odd number of values, the median is the measurement associated with the middle rank value. If the data set contains an even number of values, the median is the measurement associated with the average of the two middle rank values. How about I just give you an example? Six customers purchased the following number of magazines. Find the median for this data set. The first thing that we need to do is to order this data set. So if we have this order, we can now identify the number of values that we have. In this example, we have five data values, and this is an odd number of values. That is why we need to follow rule number one. All we need to do is to identify the middle rank value. So if we have ranks one to five, the middle rank is three. And what corresponds this rank is the value three in the given data set. Therefore, the median for this data set is three. In the next example, the ages of 10 college students are given. Find the median for this data set. So if we're going to order this data set, we can see here this array. Now we can see here that the sample size is 10. Therefore, this is an even number of values. So we need to use rule number two. So all we need to do is to identify the two middle rank values. In this case, it's 20 and 23. So getting the average of this, or 20 plus 23 divided by 2, will give us a median of 21.5. If you're having a trouble identifying the middle rank values, you can use the formula n plus 1 divided by 2. So n is equal to 10 plus 1 divided by 2, the answer is 5.5. 5.5 tells us that we need to choose the fifth and the sixth value because 5.5 is between these two ranks. So the two middle rank values are 20 and 23. Using the previous example, we will now find the median for this ungrouped frequency distribution 
following these guidelines. We start by preparing the column for the cumulative frequency. For those who don't know, you just start with the topmost frequency, which in this case is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 12 is 18, 18 plus 8 is 26, and 26 plus 5 is 31. The next step is to divide n with 2. So n in this case is equal to 31 or the total frequency. So 31 divided by 2, the answer is 15.5. Now, since the value of 15.5 is between 6 and 18, the corresponding value to the value above 15.5 is 3. Therefore, 3 is the median for this distribution. The median is used to find the center or middle value of a data set. So if you are trying to find out whether values fall into the upper half or lower half of the distribution, you can always use the median. We cannot use the mean for open-ended distribution, so you use median instead. The median is affected less than the mean by extremely high or extremely low values. So if outliers are involved, you can use the median instead of the mean. Now, if you want to identify the most frequent data in the data set, you can use the mode. The data set can have more than one mode. A data set is bimodal if there are two modes in it. A data set is said to have no mode if all values occur with equal frequency. For example, to get the mode of the data set, we need to arrange the set in order. And by identifying the frequency for each of the data, we can identify the most frequent data. So the frequency of 8 is, oops, this is just 5, right? And for 9, the frequency is 3. And for 10, we have 2. For 11, we have 2. And for 14, we have 3. So it's clearly stated here that 8 has a frequency of 5. And it's the highest among the data. So the mode is 8. In this next example, notice that each of these data has only a frequency of 1. So meaning there is no mode for this set of data. In this example, let us try identifying the mode. So 18 here has a frequency of 3. 24 also has a frequency of 3. Since the rest has only 2 and 1 as their frequency, then we have two modes for this set of data data. So the set of data is said to be bimodal because there are two, two modes, 18 and 24. If a frequency distribution table is given, it will be easier for us to identify the mode because all we need to identify if the given is a frequency distribution, it will be easier for us to find the mode because all we need to do is to find the frequency with the highest if the given is a frequency distribution, it will be easier for us to identify the mode because all we need to do is to find the score with the highest frequency. In this case, 3 has the highest frequency which is 12. So therefore, the mode for this given is 3. The mode is used when the most typical case is desired. So if you want to rank different products by votes, the mode is the best measure. It is the easiest average to compute. And uh, if nominal and categorical data are involved, you can use the mode instead of the median and the mean. And that's all for this video. If you want more lessons in business statistics, make sure to check my playlist in the description below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for your updates. See you in the next video.